The Mulmi 26, also known as Halo, is a true behemoth in the world of aviation. Standing at over 40 feet tall and stretching an astonishing 131 feet in length, the Mulmi 26 took its first flight in December of 1977 and is still in production today. Its remarkable lifting capacity of up to 20 tons makes it a valuable asset in any military, playing a crucial role in transporting troops, supplies, and even heavily armored vehicles with the help of its two harnessed twin D136 turboshaft engines, each generating a mind-boggling 11,400 horsepower. These engines, combined with the seven-blade main rotor, allows the Milmi 26 to lift and transport massive cargoes across vast distances with unrivaled efficiency. It can even pick up small airliners. The Milmi 26 is the true unrivaled heavyweight champion of the skies, holding the record as the largest helicopter to have ever gone into serial production. However, the Milmi 26 also holds the unfortunate record of being involved in the deadliest aviation disaster ever suffered by the Russian forces. This disaster was so tragic that it would become the most deadly loss of life in the history of helicopter aviation. This incident would take place in the year 2002. The Russian Federation was in the midst of the Second Chechen War. As a result of the stalemate that was the First Chechen War, which ended in Russian withdrawal in August of 1996. Tensions would still remain high amongst the Russians and the Chechens, who gained in de facto independence until 1999, when the tensions would escalate and the conflict would resume. A series of apartment bombings in several Russian cities were blamed on the Chechen militants. This proved to be the trigger for the Second Chechen War. The Russian military launched a massive offensive to regain control of Chechnya. By the year 2002, the war had been ongoing for three years, and the situation in Chechnya itself had evolved significantly. Although large-scale fighting within Chechnya had ceased, since the main offensive, daily attacks would still continue as the Chechens entered into a guerrilla war against the Russians. Following the main offensive, the conflict in the destroyed Chechen capital city of Grozny also transitioned into a protracted insurgency characterized by guerrilla warfare tactics. The war would take a toll on both sides, with civilian casualties and extensive damage to infrastructure. In the chaos of war, the Milmi 26 would continue to play a crucial role for the Russians, transporting troops, supplies, and heavily armed vehicles as ambushes and attacks on the ground were more commonplace and risky. On August 19, 2002, tragedy would strike the Russian forces. On that fateful day, the Russian military would employ the use of the Mulmi-26 to transport troops and equipment to a military base in Kankala on the outskirts of Grozny. The Mulmi-26 would depart from Mozdok Air Base in Russia the helicopter carried 147 passengers, including five crew, with a large number of passengers being officers. On that August day in 2002, the Milmi 26 would be overloaded by 57 people above its normal capacity of 90 personnel. Although this practice of overloading had become commonplace amongst the Russians, as the Milmi 26 approached its destination at the Kankala airbase. Unbeknownst to the Russians, Chechen insurgents would be located in the apartment buildings surrounding the base. Observing the Milmi 26 as she descended, and they would be waiting to strike. The Chechens would be armed with a sophisticated surface-to-air portable heat-seeking Russian-made missile, the 9K-38 Eagler. As the Mil Mi-26 approached its destination, the Chechens would fire the 9K-38 Eagler, and it would result in a direct hit to one of her two D-136 engines, causing flames to break out. 
the helicopter would lose control as it descended. After the Milmi 26 was hit, the interior of the helicopter flooded with fuel. For the crew and the passengers still flying in the sky, the situation would only get much worse as they were descending directly into their own anti-personnel minefield, situated around the perimeter of the Kankala base. The Milmi 26 would crash into this minefield, setting off its own friendly mines as it plummeted into the ground, further crushing the interior of the aircraft, crumpling the main cargo hold, trapping many inside. The crash would engulf the aircraft into flames, leaving those trapped inside scrambling for an exit in the heat of the wreck. But with the overcrowding and the main cargo hold being buckled in by the damage, the only two escape options was that of a small cockpit exit hatch near the front of the helicopter and through the side doors. Soldiers clambering out of the helicopter would further set off these anti-personal mines. After all the madness had unfolded, only 29 passengers, including five crew, had escaped the burning inferno alive, leaving them still stranded in a minefield, unable to get to a safe distance from the engulfed crash site. A rescue operation would immediately commence by the Russians, who watched the whole incident take place in front of their own eyes. Further complications would arise when the rescue effort was delayed until explosive experts could clear a path for emergency workers through the mines. These timely complications would leave any wounded and burned victims by the flames to hold out until medical attention could arrive. Once the mines were cleared, those survivors would finally be treated. But for some, it would be too late. In total, 127 out of 142 on board that day would come to lose their lives. As 14 of the survivors would die over the next few days from their severe burns. In the aftermath of this disaster, the Russian authorities would immediately try and downplay and cover up the incident, as to not have the Russian people come to conclusions about the military and its command in Chechnya. The Russian military's first response to the disaster itself was that technical failure on board the Milmi 26 had led to the crash after a warning light indicated a fire had broken out in the engine. At first, it was also thought that there were only 112 passengers and five crew on board, but this number was later downgraded to 85 by the Russian Ministry of Defense. Once again, in a confusing turn of events, this figure would change once more to 132 people on board the Mulmi 26. The Russian military in the beginning would not classify if anyone had been killed or injured in the crash, as early Russian Ministry of Defense reports had said only a handful of people had been on board the Milmi 26. Some pro-Moscow Chechen leaders would back the Ministry of Defense's statement, believing such an attack could not have taken place so close to a major Russian military base. They too insisted that technical failure had led to the crash. The Chechen separatists would claim the attack as their own doing and not due to technical failures as stated by the Russian authorities, but due to their own missile strike on the Milmi 26. Overall, there would be lots of confusion surrounding the early incident due to the conflicting reports and the Russian story not being backed up by the locals and multiple eyewitnesses stating that they saw a man fire what appeared to be a shoulder launched missile from the second floor of an abandoned building near Grozny. The Russian officials at first would reject these claims that the rebels had shot down their seventh Russian helicopter alone that year. But the following day, in a change of heart, they confirmed that a missile was indeed responsible for the incident and that the true number was higher than originally told by the Russian authorities. Finally, the true casualty count had been revealed. Russia's grief was matched in equal intensity by its anger at the military, which was accused by the media of incompetence and an attempted cover-up. The Russian authorities' reaction to the Kankala crash was reminiscent to that of their response to the Kursk nuclear submarine disaster, which took place just two years prior. 
a Russian official, would later comment on the Kankala crash by saying the following. It doesn't matter how weak the guerrilla troops grow. If one person can kill that many people with one shot, if one person can shoot down a helicopter and do so much harm, it remains a serious political problem. Putin would declare a national day of mourning for the victims of the Kankala disaster for the 22nd of August 2002. In response, the Russians would begin a search for the igla used in the attack. It was later discovered in the apartment blocks as stated by the eyewitnesses. In retaliation, the Russians would respond by demolishing the apartment blocks near the base from which the missile strike was launched to prevent any further such attacks happening in the future. In spite of protests, more than 100 families were left homeless by these demolitions. The families whose homes were now demolished were apparently given little time to clear the possessions before everything was cleared to the ground. A Russian general would comment on these demolitions. He believed that these local residents had known about these Chechen rebels and had aided them in their attack and failed to inform law enforcers of their plans. The crash would lead to the suspension of the Russian army's aviation commander, Colonel Vitaly Pavlov, who would later resign from his position in September 2002. President Putin would go on to further criticize the Russian Defense Ministry for the violations, and an official inquiry was launched to find these Chechen attackers. A month later, in September 2002, the Chechen video of the Mil Mi-26 crash would surface online. Footage of the helicopter downing was obtained by the Associated Press from a Turkish news agency, along with a statement by separatist Chechen president Aslan Mashkadov, announcing, Here is a helicopter that is on fire and falling down near Kankala. It was hit by our Igla anti-aircraft missile. The Russian investigators would begin a search for those Chechens who filmed and were seen in the video, determined to get back at their enemies after this costly disaster and bring someone to justice, whether that be a scapegoat or not. Several months later, the prosecutor's office in Chechnya completed the investigation and found what they called a gang of aircraft gunners who waged a personal war against Russian aircraft for two years. This small team was extremely effective downing three helicopters and killing over 150 soldiers. They came to be known as the Chechen Air Defense Forces Group. This group was created in the summer of 2001 under the personal leadership and financial patronage of veteran rebel leader Shamil Basayev. This Chechen Air Defense Group was given $1 million for buying arms. The anti-aircraft gunners having received combat training at a military base in Turkey on how to use these systems in combat. The money was then used to buy 10 portable surface-to-air missile systems in Georgia and then later smuggled into Chechnya. After the investigation had ended, the Russians had believed to have found their culprit. The court ruled in April 2004 that 27-year-old Doku Dantimirov was one of the five rebels behind the attack. It was believed that Doku had delivered these Igla missiles in his own car and had also filmed the attack. The other four Chechen fighters filmed in the video would still remain on the run. A Russian court would sentence the Chechen rebel to life in prison for shooting down the Mil Mi-26 and killing 127 on board. Tehan Temirov was also ordered to pay 100,000 rubles to the relatives of each victim and 50,000 rubles to each of the surviving victims. The Mil Mi-26 crash at the Kankala Air Base remains a deadly disaster that holds significant historical and aviation importance. It is unfortunate that this incident has largely faded away from public memory outside of certain communities. The limited availability of photographs and the passage of time have contributed to the diminished awareness this event among the general public. For the Mil Mi-26, it continues to be a valuable asset in various sectors of the military all around the world till this day. Despite being introduced several decades ago, its design and capabilities have stood the test of time. 
whether it's supporting humanitarian missions by airlifting heavy cargo and rescue operations in remote areas, or contributing to construction projects and resource extraction. The Mil Mi-26 still remains a trusted workhorse of the skies.